On behalf of Auburn University's College of Architecture, Design, and Construction and the Harvard College of Business, thank you for joining us for this webinar on Auburn's Executive Master of Real Estate Development Program. I'm Katie McKay, Director of Student Recruitment for Graduate Business Programs, and with me is Greg Bass, Communications Specialist, who will facilitate the question and answer portion of the webinar. Submit your questions at any time during the presentation. So that we can streamline our response, please use the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen rather than chat or hand raise. If we do not get to your question during this live broadcast, we will follow up with you via email. Here are our panelists, Professor Michael Robinson, Director of the MRED Program, Dr. Joe Colazzo, Assistant Director for Graduate Executive Programs, Mr. Greg Winchester, Head, Industry and Alumni Relations, and Adjunct Faculty Member of MRED, and Founder and CEO of Summit Investors in Atlanta, Georgia, and Ms. Megan My Michael, Manager, Real Estate for Whataburger, and a 2016 graduate of the MRED Program. Today we'll explore why, why a real estate professional might need or want an MRED degree, the features of the program, its strong connection to industry, and we'll hear from Ms. Michael about her experience. With that, let me introduce Dr. Joe Colazzo. After a long and distinguished career as a businessman and after earning several advanced degrees, Joe's a graduate of Auburn's Executive MBA program. He's also one of our leadership instructors and the primary recruiter for our executive programs. Thank you, Katie. So why a master's in real estate development? Most of us have seen or heard of big dollar real estate deals. They capture our attention and prompt us to wonder, is this possible for me? And most of us have seen or heard of big real estate deals gone sour. And that's not a financial knee scrape, it's painful. And in some cases, it means financial death. Real estate development involves the application of a well-coordinated set of varied disciplines. If one of the critical pieces is not well understood or missing, the potential outcome moves from possible success to probable failure. Real estate development is a complex process and involves much more than building physical structures. How do you analyze the market and the potential return? What are the compliance and regulatory hurdles? How do you balance aesthetics and function? How do you best apply resources within time constraints? Establish legally sound agreements and find the money to do it all. Auburn designed its Executive Master of Real Estate Development program around these questions. The curriculum connects academic concepts and theories with practical, real-world application. The faculty, the practicing professionals who teach as adjuncts, and a carefully selected cohort of those who are in real estate and those looking to shift careers to real estate combine to generate the best possible learning environment. We build a cohort specifically to leverage the skills and experiences of each of our students to the benefit of all. Though we expect you to have experience and expertise, we know it's likely that you have gaps in your understanding of the universe of real estate development. We want you to bring your expertise so that we can leverage it. But more importantly, we want you to bring us your gaps so that we can fill them. When you look at our curriculum, you'll see it's well-rounded. That's the that, that the courses and the approach encompass that broad universe of real estate development. However, what's not readily apparent are the effects of the cohort-based approach and the bonds that the approach creates among MRED students. In the end, you not only have the knowledge to confidently address the complexities of real estate development, you have a network of relationships with your classmates that you can draw upon long after graduation. And we, seen, we have seen that happen year after year. Now let me introduce Professor Michael Robinson. He's a professor of architecture and landscape architecture in the College of Architecture, Design and Construction and is the founding faculty member of the MRED program. Michael? Uh, Dr. Colazzo spoke about why an MRED education. Let me tell you a little bit about some of the highlights of the Auburn's program. To be successful, we believe that the real estate developer needs crea the creativity of designers, the discipline of planners, the understanding of uh, construction managers, and the knowledge, the knowledge of financiers, and the savvy of business managers. 
To create a curriculum that addresses these needs, we draw on two of Auburn's most distinguished colleges, the College of Architecture, Design, and Construction, and the College of Business. This collaboration may appear obvious, but it's actually quite unusual. Most NREM programs run out of the uh, business schools and lack an emphasis on the key elements of design and construction that are necessary for real estate development. Our program runs five semesters and is a blend of short-term residencies, distance learning courseware, and field studies. This is a tested and proven curriculum design and it's unique in the nation. You'll come to campus at the beginning of each semester for a week-long residency. You'll connect with your cohort, your faculty, a network of NRED advisory board members, uh, some of whom are alums of the program, and you'll participate in some campus life, hopefully attending a football, basketball, or baseball game. You will take classes in the new Horton Hargraves Hall. This is a 100,000 square feet of state-of-the-art learning facility just opened in the fall of 2019. It includes collaborative learning spaces, flexible classrooms, and an innovation lab. Post-residency, Courses are delivered via distance through a combination of recorded materials and conferencing software. Here's an excerpt from one of our distance courses with one of our construction faculty, Dr. Paul Holly. You know, what we need to sort of remember as we, as we sequence a cast in place frame is the location of these cold joints. In other words, where, where we went from one item that was poured on one day to an item that was poured on a, on a different day uh, and then again, like this, uh, the column on the next floor above was poured at a different time. And so those, those, those joints were in between um, one cast in place member to the next. Most of the time in cast in place frames uh, are going to be horizontal. And that's, that's simply attributable to uh, the fact that concrete has most of the strength and compression as opposed to tension. And then ultimately we find ourselves um, you know, with a cast, uh, a cast in place frame, uh, like you see here. Uh, the cold joints we looked at earlier, uh, you know, right here from the verticals up to the beam. And of course, here's the inside of the pans that we saw uh, in our example. So we build, our, build the curriculum so that courses build one upon another to culminate in a capstone project. This project is an intensive five hour course, which will call on your skills, your experience and your education to develop a real world project. It's not a case study, it's not a theoretical exercise. Developers have acquired property and come to the MRED program to look to students to build plans and to create proposals that can be built. In addition, the curriculum features four field studies, three domestic and one international. You will visit acclaimed projects and meet with award-winning developers, um, architects and construction managers. First of these studies occurs in the first semester and is typically held in the East, in Philadelphia. The second is in the West, traditionally in Portland, Seattle, or Denver. And we hold the third domestic field study wherever the annual fall meeting of the Urban Land Institute occurs. In your last semester, you'll travel internationally for 10 to 12 days. Past cohorts have looked at development projects and development districts in Rio, Santiago, Sydney, Auckland, um, Melbourne, Hong Kong, Singapore, London, and Paris. Each MRED faculty member has substantial real estate experience, and the program makes a point to draw upon the expertise of practicing real estate development professionals both regionally and nationally. The education is grounded in the tangible, it's grounded in the practical, and it's grounded in the applicable. And as Joe mentioned, students, uh, the student cohort brings their own expertise and experience to this. Uh, the mix is the cornerstone of Auburn's um, executive education process, and it transforms the cohort into a collaborative community of learners and transforms the faculty into a leader uh, of a team of active learners. For admission, we require a four-year undergraduate degree from an accredited university and three years of professional experience in real estate development or a closely related field, such as construction, finance, design, or other. Uh, alternatively, a potential student could have five years uh, professional experience in an unrelated field, 
with, uh, as long as they can demonstrate progressively increasing responsibility in their jobs. Our students usually have 10 plus years of experience in real estate development, construction, um, management, architecture, engineering, appraisal, commercial brokerage, and nearly a quarter of them are C-suite executives. We do not require any um, entrance exams because most of our students have been out of academia for at least 10 years. But we do interview all applicants and careful, con carefully consider transcripts, statements of interest, and letters of recommendation, all with the deliberate intent of designing a cohesive cohort for, of students to enter the next semester. The tuition is $1,500 a credit hour, and the program is 39 credit hours long for a total tuition of $58,500. This cost includes um, non-typical, uh, this cost includes items that are not typically a part of tuition. We provide all books and course materials, all lodging and most meals during campus residencies, domestic and international field studies, and we also uh, cover all incidental Auburn University fees. To undertake an executive graduate program on top of your current professional and personal responsibilities is a tremendous uh, challenge and we understand that. We want you to focus on your uh, coursework, so we'll register you for classes, order your books and course materials, make all lodging and meal um, arrangements for residencies and field studies, and we'll even make sure that you have a cap and gown for graduation. Now let me introduce Greg Winchester. Greg is the founder and CEO of Summit Investors in Atlanta, Georgia, and has over 30 years of executive experience in the capital markets. He is, a, is the chair of the MRED Advisory Board, the head of industry and alumni relations for the MRED program, and an adjunct professor teaching in the program. Greg? Thanks, Michael. It's great to be here. A unique aspect of Auburn's MRED program is our strong industry connection. Our students personally connect with and learn from an advisory board of 50 successful industry leaders from all areas of real estate development and the capital markets arena. Our alumni board and network allow students to hear from recent MRED graduates from around the continent who advanced in their careers after the program. The program allows you to meet these industry players in one central location. Auburn has a proprietary cutting edge program called City Builders, which allows both the university and the industry to connect and collaborate. No other real estate development program offers such a unique platform. As an MRED student, you're eligible to attend all City Builders events. We have an annual keynote speakers event, a high powered annual industry outlook panel, and an annual symposium in a major city on a cutting edge topic. You'll have a front row seat at these events, um, and there's no cost. Attending these events are advisory board members, faculty, industry leaders, alumni, friends of the program. You'll be seen as a participant in the greater real estate industry at these events. In addition, through our City Builders program, we develop an online library of interviews with legendary developers and industry leaders. You'll have access to these amazing stories where they should share their careers, their goals and aspirations, and their keys to success. And we continue to grow this constantly, this library, and it'll be integrated into your courses at strategic locations. As you move forward in your real estate career, these stories will answer many of your questions about how to get started and how to become a professional. We're constantly expanding our industry networks through our fantastic network and technology. Our goal is that once you finish the program, you'll have an understanding of the breadth and scope of the industry, the current challenges and opportunities, and a knowledge and exposure to many major players. We hope that it will inspire and encourage you to become the real estate professional that you aspire to be. I'll now turn the program over to Ms. Megan Michael, Megan is a 2016 graduate of our program and currently is a manager of real estate with the National Chain Whataburger. She lives in the great town in Nashville, Tennessee. Megan? Thanks, Greg. I'd like to uh, share my journey with y'all to pursuing a master's degree and why Auburn MRED was the right choice for me. 
I can tell you unequivocally that my training and experience at Auburn was instrumental in preparing me for my chosen career path. I majored in corporate communications at Northern Illinois University, wanting to be a corporate event planner. I was working for a company doing corporate hospitality events when the market started to sour in 2007, 2008. When the company downsized, I went to work for the Cheesecake Factory, thinking that this would blow over quickly and events would pick back up. A month later, I was still a bartender at the Cheesecake Factory because this wasn't blowing over quickly. In 2012, still with the Cheesecake Factory, but now as a manager, I was offered a job in the Middle East opening restaurants for cheesecake there. I love being in the restaurants, but I wanted to be the person that found them and built them, not the person locking the door at 2 a.m. When I approached my company with the idea of my dream job, they told me that even though they love my work, I didn't have the right experience. The ideal candidate for that job had seven to 10 years experience. So I quit my job and moved to Nashville. I was going to Vanderbilt to get an MBA. They have a program with an emphasis in real estate. While in Nashville, I had met someone that was going to attend Auburn for a degree in hospitality management. They told me all about the program, how Auburn had its own hotel and how hands-on the learning was. Since I came from a hospitality background, I thought I'd check it out. I found the NRED program while scrolling through the site. Not only did the curriculum match the qualifications needed for my dream job, you got to travel the world. That was the selling point for me and I applied that night. At every step of my journey, I needed to acquire different business skills in order to be successful. Some by the seat of my pants and I got good at it. However, I also realized there were a lot of holes in my business knowledge. I knew very little about important areas such as lease and contract negotiation, understanding of contract law, due diligence for a wide scope of transactions, market analysis, and a pro forma, forget about it. I had no idea what net present value meant, much less how to calculate one. This program gave me all of that and so much more. The faculty is first class. They understand the challenge of dealing with students who are juggling career and had experience in parts of real estate development, but lack the experience of overall knowledge of a full-on real estate developer. The faculty made themselves available for questions after class and beyond. I reached out to more than one professor when I started as a corporate real estate manager, and I keep in touch with others to this day. Each semester begins with about a week on campus with your classmates. The on-campus portion of the semester is invaluable. It was an opportunity to be away from the distractions of our daily lives and be immersed in the educational experience. You're wearing your backpack with your books and going from class to class with your buddy. And after class, you're socializing, having a few glasses of wine, discussing topics and sharing individual experiences. We all came from different real estate disciplines. And the more we got to know each other, the more we learned from each other. I was never an architect, never gonna be. But when you're in the same class as one, the entire program and you hear the questions they ask, you begin to see how they think and it helps you paint the bigger picture. The field studies were by far my favorite part of the program. I love to travel, so that in itself was a joy to me. When we would go on these field studies, we got to meet with investors, contractors, architects, developers, large and small, basically anyone that would talk to us. And we would have these candid conversations about their projects, what went right, what went wrong, biggest mistakes they made, and the greatest successes they had. We've toured job sites, we've looked at 31 page long pro formas, we've walked finished products, projects. The wisdom and experience you gain from these conversations is something that would have taken you years, if not your entire career to get on your own. The Auburn Alumni Network is worth its weight in gold. If you don't need to learn another thing about real estate development, the networking opportunities throughout this program, fellow alumni, city builders, developers all over the world, is worth every cent in all of your time. When I met with the executive team at Whataburger, one of the first things my boss who recruited me told them about me was that I had a master's of real estate development from Auburn University. For me, the highlight of the Auburn education was the opportunity for self-discovery and personal growth. The minute you step onto the Auburn campus, you immediately feel some part of something larger than yourself, 
a culture that is committed to you as an individual, taking you forward to your best self. The Auburn program isn't about in any way trying to change who you are, but rather Auburn is about making darn sure you know who you are, how you think, what buttons you have, and who can push them. That's the essence of self-awareness and emotional intelligence, probably the two most important components of a successful leader. Although I could have received a master's degree at a different program, I wholeheartedly believe that my success would not have been possible without the Auburn experience. War Eagle. Megan, thank you uh, for your time tonight and for choosing Auburn University for your MRED degree. Let me summarize what we've said so far. We believe that the coursework, the experiential field studies, the connections with other cohorts and alumni, the networking opportunities and interacting, interaction with practice, practicing professionals enable students to see what others don't and build what others can't. Now we would like to take any questions you might have about the program. Okay, thank you, Michael. All right, we had a number of questions that came in, but I want to encourage the audience to uh, keep those questions coming, if you do not mind. All right, Michael, the first question is for you. I'm considering either an MBA or a master's in real estate development. Is there an advantage to your program versus an MBA? Um, Greg, the, what's interesting is that a, a lot of uh, potential students uh, ask me that same question. Uh, they are considering either an MBA or an MBA with a concentration in real estate. And what I try to suggest to them is that uh, if they go into an MBA program, even one with a concentration, there'll only be a handful of students in there that have any real interest in real estate development. But if you come into the MRED program, you will be, uh, uh, in a cohort of 25 to 30 students, all of which have either um, extensive experience or a, a, a deep interest in real estate development as a profession. Um, that means that the conversations uh, that you'll have with your, uh, uh, with your cohort will be much more uh, focused on real estate and uh, much, more, uh, uh, much more valuable to you as you uh, as you try to advance your career in, in real estate development. Thank you, Michael. Okay, Joe, this next question is for you, and it's a two-parter. How do I prepare for my interview? That's something you mentioned uh, in your presentation is the interview process as, as you go through and apply. And then how many students do you admit for each cohort? Thanks for the question. Greg, the interview that we have in the program is designed for us to determine the mindset and the orientation of a uh, student in terms of how willing and enthusiastic they might be in supporting other folks. Um, it's our best opportunity to discover whether or not we have an applicant that isn't inclined to, to play well with others. And that's the intent of the, um, of the interview. And so there's really no way for you to prepare for it. We're not gonna be asking you questions about what you know about real estate. We understand you come to the program to fill those gaps, um, but there's no preparation for it. No need to have sleepless nights before you have that interview. Uh, in terms of how many people do we put in a cohort? Um, usually between 25 and 30. Wanna keep that a reasonable number so that we have plenty of time for the students to interact. Thank you, Joe, I appreciate that. Next question is for Greg. All right, Greg, do most of the faculty have a background in real estate or construction or business? Thanks, Greg. That's one of the beauties of the program is that we have a great mix. We have, you know, professors that are, that are highly tenured, that are incredible experts in their particular area, and also have uh, experience in industry and also in consulting. And then we bring in a number of guest lecturers and others from the industry. So you kind of get a blended model that's the best of everything. All right, great, thank you. This next question's for Michael. Michael, I have, actually have a few questions coming your way, so be prepared. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> Am I required to attend all of the residencies and the field studies? Um, 
we uh, require you to attend all the residencies. And if you have a particular reason that you may not be able to make a field study because of um, a family emergency or something, uh, we can provide alternate uh, assignments for those. But the reason why uh, it's, it's imperative that you uh, attend residencies is because about a third of the coursework is done in residency. So if you miss that, you've missed about a third of the course. Okay. All right. Anything else? I'm staying with you on this one, Michael. Okay. Okay, here we go. My career is not in real estate. Are there prep courses prior to the start of the semester that I need to take? We do have some uh, recorded uh, lectures on, uh, particularly in the area of finance, uh, but it is not required that you do any preparation prior to attendance. We use our first semester of uh, uh, principles of real estate development and a case study course along with our field trip uh, to try to bring everyone up to the same level of uh, uh, a knowledge in terms of the, the vocabulary of real estate and many of the uh, um, functional aspects of real estate development. Okay. Michael, I'm going to give you a break for a second, but I've got a multi, um, multiple question coming your way in just a second. Let's switch over to Joe. All right, Joe, this is up your alley. Do I pay tuition in advance or as I go along? Am I able to use financial aid or VA benefits for this tuition? Thank you for the question, Greg. Um, tuition is paid um, in accordance with the credit hours that are associated with the semester. And you pay uh, as you move through the 21 months of the program. Uh, those who are interested in financial aid, I would encourage you to, um, at the end here, we'll have a, a consultation link. I would encourage you to set up some time and we can talk about um, your specific situation. And more importantly, I can give you contact information for our people that are in financial aid. Uh, and those who are eligible for GI benefits, we can make the same arrangement in putting you in contact with our Veterans Affairs Office. Okay, thank you. And uh, we had a follow-up question on that from Iris, and I hope that uh, we covered uh, that uh, question uh, specifically for you as well and hit all the points that you needed to hear. Okay, Megan, switching to you. Emma, let's see. Is my spouse able to attend a field study or international study trip with me? Your spouse can. My class had brought some spouses on the international study trip, but it is very much a learning experience from the time you get up in the morning till just about dinner time, you're meeting with developers and running all over and your spouse doesn't come to that. So um, if they're fine traveling, you know, doing stuff during the day without you, bring them. Otherwise, enjoy the time with your classmates. Very good. Thank you. Megan, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, skip around. Uh, we had a number of questions come in, but uh, here's one that, that is specifically for you. How many hours a week did you have to devote to your schoolwork? I would say between 10 and 15. Um, there's going to be some parts, you know, if you're strong in finance, maybe you need to dig a little deeper during the construction and that might take a little more time or vice versa. But for planning purposes, I would say between 10 and 15 hours a week. Okay, thank you, Megan. Okay, this next question, Michael, I'm gonna start it with you, but it's probably one that Greg can jump in on as well. Okay, the real estate industry is an ever-changing industry, and how does this program become adjusted and remain relevant within that constant change that occurs within our industry? For example, Many developers, developers are looking at mixed use, and that wasn't the case three years ago. How are the courses reflected with the constant change of the industry? Well, we're in a, a period right now in which uh, uh, the future of the industry is uh, in great question. And uh, one of the things that, uh, for example, one of the things we do is that we have uh, a series of fixed courses, but not fixed content. Um, in this next uh, cohort, one of the things we're going to do is uh, bring in uh, someone to run a couple of workshops on distressed debt, which seems to be relevant to um, uh, 
current real estate development practice. Um, and so we are constantly uh, enhancing our courses with people who uh, uh, have relevancy in, uh, in the change that's going on within the industry and constantly updating um, our programs, updating uh, the places that we go on our field trips to uh, try to address some of those changes and speak with professionals who are involved in that change. Okay. Uh, Greg, did you want to add to that? I know that uh, City Builders often takes a look at many of the um, cutting edge topics uh, that are raised during, um, uh, during the course of a semester. Sure, I think um, it's, it's a really good uh, question because real estate is constantly changing and, and um, it's you know, so heavily influenced by what's going on with the greater economy. Um, one thing that, that we try to pay close attention to, which you'll have the advantage of, is with the advisory board, we get a mix of leaders from all the different product types and a lot of different geographies in real estate. So when something becomes very topical in one particular area, say for example, hospitality or data centers or warehouses or e-commerce, we have the ability to tap into them and make sure we're integrating um, the latest and greatest on it. And then uh, we also, with our guest lecture program, bring in specialists. For example, the, the issue of parking has been very topical in the last couple of years. So we bring in industry experts that can help us with some of the challenges there. So uh, between city builders and guest lectures and our advisory board, we have a good reach into you know, what's current and what's relevant and what the future is. Thank you, Greg. Okay, this next question is for Michael. Michael, this is a, um, a lengthy question that we got from William, and I, I'll read it out to you, but then I'll come back to specific points if necessary. Okay, what William's looking for uh, is the class profile stats after graduation. For instance, what is the placement percentage within three to six months of graduation? Is an internship necessary, and does that placement percentage increase if you uh, pursue an internship? What's the average and median starting salary uh, for an in, uh, for an MREG graduate, and where are the typical grads being recruited? And I assume that's in terms of geography. Right. Well, that's a multiple set of questions, uh, but first, let me state that. All of our students are currently uh, working full time. And so the idea of job placement and recruitment is a little bit different in an executive program than it might be in just a master's uh, program. Um, I will say that our, our students, uh, uh, probably half of them uh, by the time they graduate have advanced in their either in the existing uh, business they're in or they have changed uh, and been promoted uh, in the next uh, uh, job that they're, they're, uh, they've obtained. Um, if you're talking about an average starting salary, it, we have a range of, uh, uh, it's, we have a range of people in our, our students in our program, some of whom have been real estate developers for 15 years, and uh, they uh, are uh, chief executive officers of their own development corporation, so they don't really get a, a raise, they don't get a bonus, they don't get an a bump in salary for having an MRED degree. Um, but many others are, uh, of our younger students come out and they make somewhere in the range of 60 to $80,000 as they trans, uh, transfer into uh, uh, more real estate oriented uh, uh, businesses. Uh, what was some others, Greg? Okay. Uh, I missed something? Uh, well, one, one of the things would be um, once the students graduate, uh, where are they uh, being recruited? Um, and another way to phrase that question might be uh, not so much after graduation, but where do our students come from? Um, I believe that uh, we have as many as 44 states that are represented um, by our MRED program. Yes, they come from all over the United States. Uh, we've had one from a foreign country. Um, they come from as far away as Hawaii, um, all the way to Maine, from uh, Wisconsin to uh, Florida and uh, all, all spots in between. 
where they go is really uh, starts uh, has a lot to do with uh, the markets and and what areas are really uh, are booming. Uh, a lot of our students have gone to places like Nashville. Um, they've gone to uh, Charlotte to a variety of of uh, really um, almost secondary cities that are uh, seeing really expansive growth in the Southeast. Okay, thank you. And William, thank you for that question. That was great. Um, Michael, I'm gonna stick with you and I think you're gonna love this question. Oh, great, thanks. Yes. I am a real estate agent. Dr my dream is to develop multifamily housing and senior living communities. What is the benefit of me getting an MRAD versus working for a developer and learning hands-on? Uh, well, I, I think the, the big difference is the accelerated uh, learning that you would have in an MRED program. Uh, if you're working uh, for a multifamily developer, uh, they usually focus on one part of the multifamily uh, industry. Uh, you rarely find someone that's doing senior housing and doing um, market rate uh, uh, multifamily at the same time. Uh, so you get, a, you get a chance to explore different kinds of multifamily projects in the uh, MRED degree. Um, and at the same time, you're learning a lot more than just multifamily housing. You're learning about different product types, uh, different ways to finance uh, projects, uh, different organizational, uh, legal organizations uh, for, for um, developing real estate. Uh, it's a much broader perspective on, on real estate than simply working uh, in a specific product type, in a, in a specific market. Okay, thank you, Michael. And Ian, thank you for that wonderful question. Um, Joe, I'm going to give Michael a break and uh, address this next one to you. With the uncertainty of travel restriction, restrictions and health concerns, has the faculty reviewed or discussed how to start the upcoming semester um, and in coming years? with regard to domestic and international trips? Uh, yes, there, we're in discussion and identifying contingencies. Um, you know, naturally, after 10 years of executing this program, recognizing that that shared time, that shared uh, ex, uh, space where we have uh, exchange among the students uh, is that piece that elevates the quality of the education. With COVID being uh, a, a real part of today, um, we have considerations for uh, protecting the health and safety of our students. So some of that includes putting students in a larger space with, with um, social distancing. And what, one of the wonderful things that we've discovered was the use of technology uh, to do many things that we hadn't been doing before. So um, part of that discussion is leveraging that technology so that we do not disrupt that shared time, that space, and that students could, if we get to that point, um, participate remotely. Thank you, Joe. Michael, you thought I was done with you, but I'm back with another question. Okay. All right, this one is from Ian. What type of job position could I apply for with the federal government upon completion of the program? And how much on average might the starting salary be for a government position? Um, Ian, thank you for the question. Um, I, I have no idea what the starting salary for government position might be, depending on uh, which uh, government agency you might uh, be involved with. But there are a lot of positions in the federal government that, that uh, would be interested in someone with a, a Master of Real Estate Development degree, particularly in the area of uh, finance or uh, our uh, housing and urban development uh, are two of the areas that I think about uh, quite frequently. Uh, the General Services Administration has hired some of our students uh, in the past. And so uh, I think there's a, a wide variety of, of agencies that one could uh, particularly, uh, uh, th that would be particularly attracted to someone with uh, a Master of Real Estate Development degree. Michael, this is my last question. And unless we get one more in from the audience, uh, I'll, I'll, this, this will be our last. You're picking on me. 
I, <laughs> they love you. Uh, they, they, they love your insights. Are there any professional certifications that I will earn during the program? Uh, interestingly enough, uh, we have an affiliation with uh, uh, CCIM and uh, the Appraisal Institute. Uh, with CCIM, um, you are given um, credit for all of the courses that are required to sit for the CCIM exam except for CI 103, which is their decision-making course. And so uh, once you get an, uh, your um, MRED degree, uh, because we're uh, affiliated with the program, uh, you would just take that course and then you'd be uh, given, it, as long as you have the experience required, you'd be able to sit for that exam. Uh, the Appraisal Institute is, is uh, similar. Uh, our association with the Appraisal Institute allows students to, uh, to actually uh, be pretty far along in, in, uh, in being qualified to be able to take the Appraisal Institute examination uh, for uh, becoming a member of the Appraisal Institute, an MIA certification. And you'll have to look at, uh, you'd have to look at uh, both uh, CCIM and, and uh, the Appraisal Institute to see specifically if they're, what their work requirements are um, that would, would be in association with the kinds of uh, transfer of credits that you'd get from earning a degree in the MRED program. Okay, thank you, Michael. We had a couple more questions come in and um, Joe, this one's for you. And this is a very timely question. And this is from Bernadette. Thank you very much for this question. What is the program's take on recruiting people of color and ensuring diversity within your MRED program? Diversity is a very important and addressed issue here, not just in the MRED program, but throughout Auburn University. Uh, we believe that there's a, a richness that occurs when we can uh, recruit people of all types of backgrounds. It gives us the opportunity to deepen uh, our learning through the perspectives of people from, from, that come from a diverse people. And uh, we enthusiastically embrace that. We feel it's a key part of our programs at Auburn. And again, not just the MRED program, but throughout our university. And Joe, I think that's one of the things that, that you talk about often when you're talking about the strength of a, of a cohort. And it's that diversity um, it, and not just of industry or title, um, but also uh, the diversity that comes with people coming from just various parts of the country and various backgrounds. Um, and that, that's one of the strengths that I think our cohort um, uh, hybrid program uh, ap applies. Greg, and, and that's, you know, that's a very good point because it's not just that we're open to accept people that represent diversity is we recognize that's a recipe for deepening and expanding uh, the, the knowledge that comes from those insights and those perspectives that come from a diverse people. So it's not just a, hey, you can join our program type of thing. It's like, hey, we're excited about you being here. We want to, again, leverage your perspective. Thank you, Jeff. We have one more question from Jean. And uh, Greg, this is a variation of a question that we received previously, but I'm going to address this one to you. For someone who doesn't have experience in real estate development, what type of starting position might I get with this degree? Uh, and what might the title be? I think, you know, real estate as a career is a very wide spectrum. Uh, you have not only developers, but you have real estate attorneys, appraisers, uh, architects, engineers. And so a lot of our students do, do not necessarily become full-time developers. They may go into a field that's related to development, whether it's say being a real estate construction lender um, or an asset manager, but the fact that they understand the development process and have been around it and have all the fundamental knowledge is a huge asset. Um, so I would, I would share that, um, you know, keep in mind that when, when you come out of this program, you're going to understand the core issues and core foundational uh, points in terms of being a successful developer, but 
development is one piece of the whole employment spectrum of commercial real estate and residential real estate in this country. Uh, I want to backtrack on one quick question that was earlier about working for the federal government. One thing uh, the program does that I think is really unique is we do spend time, on, particularly on the field studies, looking at major public-private partnerships between developers and governments, whether it's federal governments or state governments or local governments. And particularly when you're getting these large-scale mixed-use developments, you see tremendous government support for them. So. Uh, that's one of the things that's that's quite uh, intriguing and, and and exciting about the program. Greg, thank you, and thank you to all of our panelists for your insights and your time, and uh, certainly thank you to our audience for the wonderful questions that they submitted. And with that, I'm going to kick it over to Katie. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, Greg. Uh, we appreciate your interest in the MRED program and look forward to guiding you through the next steps please visit us at this website or reach out via phone or email or scan the QR code on the screen to schedule a consultation with Dr. Colazzo. On behalf of our team and the College of Architecture, Design and Construction and the Harvard College of Business, thank you and War Eagle.